In this video, we're gonna we're gonna start looking at um, and even um, so we looked at ecosystems in the last video and looking at how the biotic and the abiotic factors affect an ecosystem. Keeping in mind that an ecosystem also includes not just the living organisms, but the non-living factors. Now we're going to look at a community um, and look at how the living organisms within a community um, interact with one another in a specific um, location at a specific time. And so just keeping in mind, this is from a couple of videos, uh, a couple of videos ago when we looked at the key terms, um, breaking down individuals, populations, communities. Um, a community consists of all the different populations. So this is not just a single population anymore, um, but these are all the populations uh, of all different species. Uh, that live together in the same area, that live together in the same area. And so these interactions, um, and I'll, I'll do this down here, these interactions can have different effects on the, or, uh, the organisms involved. And so they could have a positive, and we're going to write them with just, so this would be a positive, they could have negative effects on a uh, uh, individual uh, or on a specific species, um, or they could have neutral effects um, that neither or one or neither of the um, communities or, or species that make up the community are actually being involved, and that'll be with a zero. But it's keeping in mind that this is the populations, so these are the living populations, either of plants or animals or bacteria even, um, and how they interact with one another. So we could be looking at interactions at a more at a more species or individual level, um, but we're, the idea would be we can extrapolate that information to look at the entire community um, of how they're being affected. So the first um, the first type is called mutualism. Mutualism uh, is a long term uh, interaction. between two species uh, where both benefit. And so there's some sort of a mutual relationship between them that one species is doing, uh, there's some sort of a role that the first species plays with the second species um, and vice versa with, this, uh, with the other species as well. So, but, they're both, um, but they're both working in a positive manner for each other. So one example of this would be, um, and in terms of examples, um, if you have access to this, you'd be looking at the PowerPoint that is uh, the Community Interactions PowerPoint. There are multiple examples that are given. It is a very get to know at least one example of each. Um, and so one example that we, we see of mutualism is, um, is insect pollination. And so the, factor, the fact that, ha that occurs here is that for the two participants are the bees and the flowers, uh, the flowers of plants. And so for the bees, the positive um, interaction is that they obtain nectar to make honey, which is a, it's a food supply for them. Um, but for the flowers, um, the nectar is just a, it's, it's sort of a, it's just a resource that the flowers aren't gonna use, but they're able to give up. Um, but the but the mutual interaction between them is that the the bee is able to uh, attract or the pollen that's found in each plant um, is able to stick to the body of the bees and the bees will transfer uh, pollen from one plant to the next. So the mutual benefit. Um, is that bees obtain uh, food, they, can, they, can, they obtain a nutrient, while there's no negative effect on the bees. And for flowers, the, the loss of nectar isn't negative at all, uh, but it's a means in which that they can get their pollen to be transferred to another plant for reproduction. And so the propagation of a plant species is dependent on the population, and so the, the effect is positive for both of them. Second um, is competition. Competition is where you have organisms of two species. 
uh, that use the same limited they use the it's important to write that it's the same and they use the same uh, limited uh, resource uh, and they usually have a negative impact because they're tapping into the same resource so they're causing so for example if it's food uh, they might be there they'll be competing for food um, which essentially over a period of time to that species um, can have a negative effect so negative impact on each other the main one thing that you have to keep in mind as an as an aside is that um, the species don't have to directly uh, interact with one another so they could be living in a similar area they might not be predators or prey to one another um, but they could just be sharing the area or the sharing the resource pool um, without actually directly interacting with one another so they don't um, so may not the species may not interact with one another and so the interaction for both species in this case there's a loss of some sort of a resource for both and so it's a negative effect for both species the example um, would be uh, the biggest one is usually um, food and so um, you can have so in the savanna you could have um, leopards and lions who will never who will never be predator or prey to each other um, but they feed on the same prey so there's no direct interaction between the two of them because they're sort of apex predators anyways uh, individually um, but because they feed on the same prey um, this can be negatively inf uh, negatively infect affected neg and can uh, be negatively affected uh, because of uh, the presence of one another because of each other's presence which means that um, the food resource is going to deplete at twice the speed rather than the um, being able to replenish itself over time another example um, is uh, our plants so you can have competition between plants for uh, light uh, above so in terms of trees oftentimes the longer the tree grows it's trying to com it's competing with other trees around it to gain access to the sunlight uh, but it can also be nutrients and water um, in the soil um, and, and that could be where the roots are starting to expand and, and, and go off uh, into different directions searching for new nutrient sources that might be uh, which may be a competition with other uh, plants that are in, in the vicinity predation um, i think predation is quite clear in terms of what this is where you have um, uh, a member of one species um, so this species would be the predator uh, eats uh, some or all of another and that other species would be the prey and so in this case the predator um, would be they would have a positive because they're gaining loads and loads and loads of nutrient sources but the effect on the prey or on species two would be negative because you're deplenish uh, uh, sorry depleting um, the the the, the, amount, the number of organisms or the number of species that might be found of that prey and so this could be a prey uh, this could be predation of lions on zebra this could be um, sort of um, a hark which is a type of bird uh, on a lizard or it could be something even like a caterpillar um, which constantly feeds on plants on a leaf and so the leaf is actually its prey um, to a certain degree it is a living organism um, but even even at the level of a caterpillar it is a predator in its own sense uh, but it could also be the prey um, to other bird species that might be uh, so things like sparrows and, and robins and um, and crows um, they might be feeding on the caterpillars for their own energy sources so the caterpillar could actually be both a predator and a prey the next um, example is something called parasitism 
this often is a, uh, a long-term uh, interaction uh, between two species uh, where one will always benefit and the other is harmed. It's different from predation because um, unlike, and oftentimes with predation, the prey will die. Um, in the case of parasitism, oftentimes you'll have, um, you have the prey itself or, or the individual that is affected by the parasite, uh, they will be living. So this will be a living organism that is using uh, the resources of this, uh, the parasite is using the resources of this host body um, to be able to gain nutrients, but often the host is actually still alive. And so in terms of parasitism, you have species one, which is the pair. So in this case, you have the, the parasite and you have the host and the host is always going to have a negative. Back to the predation, you have species one, which is the predator and you have the prey. So these are specific terms that are used for species one and species two. And so the example here, um, you would have uh, as simple as something like a mosquito uh, feeding on a human's uh, blood source. You could have uh, larvae wasps um, found on a caterpillar um, and, and they're not feeding on the caterpillar but they're actually using the caterpillar as a, as a as sort of a living environment. Um, and then a, a sort of a, a really sort of gross one but this uh, you could have a the implantation of a tapeworm uh, inside animals or on in humans in, this, in their intestines and that tapeworm could be feeding on all of the nutrients that are being brought in um, and rather than the human getting the, the absorbed materials um, the parasite so the tapeworm is actually taking in all of the uh, all of the nutrients here commensalism um, is a type of interaction where you have one benefiting uh, and the other is neutral. So there is no effect on what we would deem to be the, the host or the, or the prey. Um, and so the effect on species one is positive on the host or, the, or species two is neutral. Um, and a couple examples here, um, hermit crabs are a really good example where hermit crabs will take over the shell of a snail that was left behind. Uh, they live in shells left by snails. Now, snails are not directly affected. Um, they're often not killed in this process. They're just, these are, sh these are empty shells that are taken over by a hermit crab. Um, and, and so for the snail, there's no effect. It's not gaining anything. It's not losing anything. It's a neutral effect. But for the hermit crab, it's a very positive effect because it gains a sense of security and protection. And another example of this would be barnacles um, that might attach themselves to a whale. Uh, barnacles would be able to uh, filter feed and they create um, sort of ha habitats on the whale itself, uh, but there's no effect to the whale. It doesn't, it doesn't stop them from swimming, it doesn't stop them from eating, it doesn't stop them from doing anything. Um, so they carry on as they go, uh, but barnacles have a source, they, uh, the, it's, a, it's a habitat gain, it's a protection as well, because there's no other organism that's, that's actually going to attack a large, huge whale. And so for them, they've, created, they've got protection, they've got habitat, and they're also able to filter feed um, in new areas uh, where the whale will be swimming, keeping in mind that barnacles are sessile, or they don't move. They're organisms that do not move, and so they're gaining an indirect method of movement um, by attaching themselves onto whales. Um, amensalism um, is it's an association where one species is inhibited and the other is unaffected. So rather than uh, the other is unaffected. Rather than in commensalism where you have a, a clear benefit to the species number one, in this case it's the complete opposite where you have the species actually being negatively affected uh, but the second species actually being quite neutral here. And so what happens, um, a good example here is if you have a herd of uh, elephants the herd of elephants is trampling and walking across the landscape on the plants, 
Um, so in this case, the herd of elephants, it doesn't actually do them anything by walking. They just have, they're able to walk across their field. But by, in terms of the plants themselves, they are negatively affected. The elephants are zero. Um, because the plants are actually, because of the sheer, um, they're being crushed by this herd of elephants, and the plants will usually, um, will usually die in this case. And then finally, the last one um, is a complete uh, neutral effect. And so this is a interaction. Um, this is a usually just a by chance interaction. Um, there's nothing, there's no association between the two organisms. So interaction between two species and no effect on each other. And so for both of them, they are neutral. And a really good example of this would just be um, a simple um, a, a bug. Um, or in the PowerPoint, it would be a tarantula. Um, but anything, anything that's just climbing and using uh, the tree um, as, a, as a transportation method. And so the tarantula is just walking on a tree. That has nothing to do with the uh, walking on a tree. No effect on the tree at all. Uh, at all. Um, and the tarantula isn't actually gaining anything. Um, to a certain degree, you may say this is commensalism um, because it, it allows the tarantula to actually um, walk across um, a region. Um, but they could have done that without that tree there as well. And so there's, there's technically a neutral effect. And so it's really important to be able to understand. And if you're oftentimes with questions like these, you'll be given a situation or a case study and you'll be asked to um, identify uh, what the uh, interaction effects will be on the organisms involved. And so you have to be able to identify what interaction is occurring and then be able to explain what, uh, what or whether there is a positive, negative, or a neutral effect on species one and on species two. So it's important to be able to describe uh, all of this um, when given a case study question. Uh, at this point, so this is essentially the last bit of interactions that we're going to look at in terms of the levels of organization. We've looked at the community level and the ecosystem level. Um, in the next video, we're going to look at um, methods of conservation and sustainability. So how are we able to actually um, sustain and conserve um, ecosystems um, in terms of where ecology is going nowadays. Um, and, then, and then finally, that's going to lead us into creating our own sustainable ecosystem, something called a mesocosm. So um, this, will be, this uh, will go over what a mesocosm is, and this, is, this will be an assignment that, um, well, a practical, which everyone has to do, uh, where you create your own um, sort of uh, mesocosm, either at home or at school, wherever this is occurring. Uh, once we're finished that, that will be the, uh, the sort of the theoretical portion of this uh, topic right here. And then we go into a section on pop population community sampling and looking at how you can have significant, um, uh, significant sampling techniques, uh, which can allow you to uh, sort of predict what population sizes there are. And so these are all coming up in, uh, in a few videos, in the next, in the next few videos um, after this.